Um, and basically, this is assuming that you guys are all music ed uh, music educators and that you're going for a holistic approach with your band program and are starting marching band. This is, this is also assuming that you're at a small school or a school without athletics. Um, and also, one last assumption that I'm going to make. You guys all know the benefits of marching band, what that can do. It can help burn fat. It can help get you in shape. And you're doing it for some of those reasons also because it will help with the kids later on if they decide to pursue music at the college level. So from Kearns 2011, he said that one of the things that you want to do when you're creating your band is to find out the interest level in your school and in the theater schools. So my advice would be to take flyers, go out to other <coughs> classes such as the art class, such as other arts classes, um, and school surveys, and then find out the interest level at your school there. And then take interested high schoolers or high schoolers who have done marching band before and enjoyed it um, to your feeder schools, specifically to your eighth graders, and then talk about, and then have, sorry, and have them talk about how, how interesting marching band is, how much fun it was. Um, and then, one, assuming you get enough interest in that, that you can have a marching band class, or if you want to take your fall concert band, make that a marching band, go for it. Um, but you want to work out a schedule. You want to be sure that very few, that you're scheduling your class at a time where very few AP or honors courses meet, because a lot of the people in band will be in those honors and AP courses. And most importantly, <coughs> If they're honors or AP courses that can be taken for core graduation requirements, definitely avoid scheduling them at that time. And just remember, accentuate the positives. Say, yeah, we're planning on doing this, this, and this. Hopefully, we'll be able to take a trip to here, see BOA, and then do that. Make it fun, but also don't forget to let them know that it's going to be a lot of work. I found that if you're honest right up front, they'll be more likely to enjoy it. Um, <coughs> back in 1955, he says you should create a uniform appearance. Um, and in my opinion, polos and pants, or even shorts, if they match the color of the pants, will work just as well for the first couple of years as will a formal uniform with bibbers, um, jackets, and a shako. So the reason why you want to have a hat or a shako is because it helps visualize. Um, it helps accentuate your visual, sorry, it helps you project. Um, so what you want to do is then define positions. So for attention, and this is from Hinsley in 1932, you'll want to have your face parallel plus 10 degrees, and this is where your hat comes in because if you have your hat like a hat, you have this visual amplifier from the bill, or if you have a shako, you've got your plume as a visual amplifier, so you'll be able to face that. Um, and then your body, which I'm defining as from your neck down to your pelvis, should be pe perpendicular to the ground, or in some places, they're transitioning it to where your pelvis and your body are slightly less than parallel, so let's say 87 degrees, 85 to 87 degrees. Um, <clears throat> your legs will be either parallel or following the shape of, or following the direction of the pelvis, and your feet will either be together, like that, or apart, like this. Um, one thing that I've noticed is really important, marching shoes. Regardless of whether you're using polos <coughs> or a formal <coughs> uniform, have, be sure that they have a good pair of marching shoes, preferably one with a rolled heel, so that way if they're doing core style marching, they can just float through it effectively. Um, also, to find your rest position, I've noticed that the easiest one would be to just have an attention position. So if we're saying attention is here, rest. So move your left foot out like about 
shoulder width and then put both of your hands behind your back. I found that that's very helpful. Of course, once you add in instrumentation, sorry, once you add in the instruments, you're definitely going to change this. Um, mark time. Mark time should only be done at attention or in a plank position. So what you want to do is you want to bring your left and then your right foot. So let's demonstrate some of these. First is up to about the ankle or about an inch, the other is up to the calf, and then the other is up to the knee. Now <coughs> notice that if you go up to the knee, it feels like a punishment for the students, so try to avoid that. And then forward marching style, there, there's the core style which I already told you about. There's a uh, big 10 or HBCU where you go up and then up, over and then down. And just remember when you go down to hit your ball of the foot, not your toes. And then one of the things that most bands do, they compete. And should you compete, I'm of the opinion that it depends on what direction you want your band to go. If you want your band to be a standalone organization, go for it. If you want it to be a supporting role, and I'd argue that for the first couple of years, that's what you, that's what you should have your band do. Just work on like a field show if your school has athletics. If your school doesn't have athletics, then you can do parade style marching and then compete with that. Um, just remember, start small, maybe do like patriotic themes, marches, those would be 120 beats per minute and they'll be easy to find. And then basically my conclusion for all of this, when you're doing this, just remember it's gonna be a lot of work for you, it's gonna be a lot of work for your kids, but they will enjoy it if you do it properly. And good luck with that.